Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Muriel. I'm a food photographer, recipe developer, and content creator. And on this channel, I talk all about food photography, vegan recipes, as well as personal growth. And in today's video, I'm talking all about the tools I use in my food photography. Anything from my camera, the tripod I use, the light modifiers, and much, much more. So if you're interested in this topic, make sure to watch this video from beginning to the end. The way this video is going to work is I'm going to divide it in three parts. The first part is going to cover all the tech that I use. The second part is going to be all about the basic tools that I use. And the third one is going to be about light modifiers and their little helpers, as I like to call them. So let's jump right in and talk about the tech that I use. First things first, in the tech category, let's talk about which camera do I use. I get a lot of questions from you guys about which camera do I use for my photography, for my videos, and for my travel photography, and the answer is quite simple. It's the Canon ADD. The first camera that I ever purchased was a Canon Rebel, and I really, really loved working with a Canon camera, and that's why when I decided to upgrade, I'd stayed within the Canon family. And the reason why I decided to go with the ADD is because, first of all, it's a cropped sensor, so it means that the camera is cheaper than, let's say, a Canon 5D Mark IV. Also, one of the big deciding factors for me is the fact that this Canon camera has a flip screen. The first camera I ever got that I used for my food photography, the Rebel camera, had a flip screen and I just fell in love with it. I thought it was so useful to play with it, especially when I'm doing overhead shots, I was able to flip the screen in order to see exactly what I was doing. It just allowed me to have a lot of flexibility in my shooting. And that was one of the big factors, believe it or not, that made me decide to go with a Canon ADD. In terms of price point for the Canon ADD, it's about $1,100 here in Canada and about $900 in the US. And honestly, I really love this camera. It's a camera that is extremely versatile. It does all the things that I would want it to do. And if you're looking for a camera to upgrade from maybe an entry level camera and are not yet ready to spend the big bucks and go with a full frame, more expensive camera, this one I think is one that falls right in the middle and it's a great camera. So I highly, highly recommend it. Next in the tech category is my lenses. I know a lot of you guys are really interested about what are the lenses that I use and I actually did an entire video covering all the lenses that I have in my photography kit and I'm going to link it in this video as well as in the description below. So if you wanna check that out, I really go in depth with the different lenses that I use and for what as well as their price points. So make sure to check that out because in this video, I'm not really going to go deep into that because I've already done it. Next on the list in terms of tech tools that I use all the time for my photography is obviously an SD card. SD cards are basically mandatory if you are shooting with a camera. All of my SD cards are either 64 gigabytes or 128 gigabytes. I find that's a good number for me and they're all from the brand SanDisk. The ones that I purchased are all available on Amazon and that's where I purchased them off of. And the one that is 128 gigabytes sells for about $50 Canadian and about $40 US. So yeah, the SD cards, you know, you need to have them, but there's nothing really exceptional or really interesting to tell about them. Last but not least, on the list of the tech items that I use in my food photography are clickers. So I use three different types of clickers. I know you might think it's a little bit excessive, but let me explain what I use them for and then you can make your judgment based on that. So the first clicker that I use is actually my phone. With my phone, I'm actually able to connect through Wi-Fi uh, my phone to my camera and basically shoot from a distance and see on the screen what my scene looks like. Generally speaking, I like to use this clicker the most when I personally appear in a scene because it allows me to go into position, position myself the way I want to, and then start shooting from a distance. So the second clicker that I use is this little Amazon basic clicker. As you can tell, it's very basic. It just has one single button. And the reason why I use this clicker is because it allows me to take a picture from a certain distance and without having to connect my phone and my camera through Wi-Fi. And the reason why I would use this clicker over the Wi-Fi connection between my phone and my camera is that sometimes I wanna still be using the Wi-Fi on my phone to listen to podcasts or something else. And I don't necessarily need to see exactly what the scene looks like. I just see it through my camera and I can just use this clicker to trigger the shutter. And finally, the third clicker is this newer clicker. This clicker actually connects through this little pin to the camera, as opposed to the Amazon Basic clicker, which is wireless. 
The reason why I personally like this clicker is the fact that this allows me to shoot in continuous shooting. So let's say I'm doing a scene where I'm pouring maple syrup onto pancakes and I want to shoot multiple photos in a shot because I really want to make sure I have at least one really good one where the maple syrup falls perfectly on the pancakes. Well, with the Amazon Basic Clicker, this only allows me to shoot with a timer, whereas with this, I can have it connected with my camera and shoot continuous shooting, which makes it really, really useful. The only thing about this is that it's a little bit short, the cord, so I really have to be kind of close to the camera, but I still really like it. I find it's a very useful little clicker to have on hand. Now let's jump into the second category, which I call the basic tools. These are tools that don't really fall into the tech tools, but are not either light modifiers or their little helpers. They are tools like my tripod, my tripod heads, the table that I use to shoot on, as well as my backdrops. In terms of tripod, this is probably the question that I get the most often. What is the tripod that I use? Because if you've been following me on Instagram, you know that I like to share my behind the scenes and in the behind the scenes, my tripod always appears because I love to shoot with a tripod. For me, to have photos that are perfectly sharp is one of the most important things in photography. So to shoot handheld, yes, it is possible to shoot beautifully handheld photos. However, my hands are not that steady, unfortunately. So I tend to rely on a tripod quite a lot for my food photography. So the tripod that I use in my food photography on the daily is the Vanguard Alta Pro 263AB. This tripod is actually really, really good. I got it actually at the same time when I upgraded my camera to the ADD. It's a rather sturdy tripod. It's not the sturdiest on the market. So if you're looking for the sturdiest tripod out there, don't go with that one. It's not the sturdiest ever, but it does a really good job. The price is not crazy. I bought it for about $200 Canadian and in the US it's I think $150. One of the reasons why I chose this tripod is the fact that it has an overhead arm which you can pull out and that makes it very convenient because it allows me not to need a C stand. Also it came with this little ball head which I find is very very useful and it's quite rotatey and yeah, it's a really good head. However, I need to give you a little warning about this head is that as I've been using my tripod all the time for two plus years, I find that the head has become a little bit less solid. These little screws don't hold as tight as they used to. And what happens is that, especially if I'm shooting with a heavier lens, the head is going to start rotating down <laughs> and not being as stable as it used to be. So I'm sure there's other ball heads on the market which are sturdier and that can take heavier lenses. But this one, although it used to be really, really good, I find that with time it has gotten a little bit weaker. And this actually takes me to the latest tripod head that I actually invested in only a few weeks ago. And it's the Manfrotto 410 Junior Gear Head. And this head is quite sturdy. It's huge. It's really, really big. And it has a lot of screws, a lot of things that you can play with to really get your camera in the position that you want it to be. I find it's extremely sturdy and really high quality. It is heavy. I was shocked when I got it in the mail, to be honest. Uh, when I put it on my tripod, I was like, oh boy, I need to upgrade my tripod because this head is heavier than the tripod itself. But seriously, the tripod is a really good one. I keep recommending it to other people because although it is maybe not the sturdiest and heaviest and more heavy duty tripod on the market, it is a really good one. I still use it on the daily for all my photography. And in terms of the gear head, although it has become weaker with time, it's still one that I continue to use, especially if let's say I need to leave my apartment and do a photo shoot somewhere else. The Manfrotto gear head is big and heavy and it doesn't really travel that well in my opinion. Another tool that I use in my food photography is a foldable table. This table I use all the time for my basic surface on which I put my backdrops on. It's really cool because you can actually adjust the legs to have it the height that you would want it to be, which I find is really useful. Also, it's foldable, so what I actually do is that when I fold it in half, I actually squeeze it in between 
my washing machine and my dryer because I don't really have an actual studio space and that's where it lives until I need to use it for my photography. And yeah, it's a very useful table to use for food photography. I personally got it at a hardware store, but I'm sure you can find equivalents on Amazon or even in a hardware store near where you live. And finally, backdrops. I actually have an entire video where I cover all the backdrops that I use in my food photography, including the ones that are made out of ceramic, the vinyl ones, the DIY ones, and the ones that are a little bit more high-end. I'm going to link this video up here as well as in the description below. So if you want to learn more about all the backdrops that I use in my photography, make sure to check out that video because I really go in depth in terms of all the backdrops that I use in my photography. In the third category of equipment that I use for my food photography, I'm going to be talking about light modifiers as well as their little helpers. In terms of light modifiers, I use two main ones. The first one is foam boards. I use black and white foam boards for modifying my light. So I use the white ones as reflectors and the black ones to absorb the light in order to cast a darker shadow onto my scene. These foam boards I've purchased at the dollar store. Usually they're two for one dollar here in Canada. So they're super, super cheap. What's cool about these foam boards is that they're relatively thin and you can easily cut them into pieces in order to suit your needs. Let's say if you have a window that's very, very small and you don't necessarily want to use a big foam board to block the light coming from it, you can just cut it into the shape of your window and put it on top and it works great. The second type of light modifiers that I use are these five in one collapsible reflectors. These reflectors are very useful because they help you modify your light in many different ways. So first of all, you have the basic structure of it, which is actually a diffuser. So you can put it in front of a window in order to diffuse your light so that the shadows are not as harsh. Then on top of the diffuser, you can put a sleeve that is either silver or golden in order to use as a reflector to add a, a little bit of light that is either cooler if you're using the silver side or a little bit of light that is golden if you use the golden side. And finally, the last side is the black side, which I've personally used as a backdrop in my photography. Hi guys, this is Editing Muriel. I realized that I forgot about one of the sides of this collapsible reflector and that is the white side. This side I use just like a regular white foam board to reflect light onto my scene to take away a little bit of the shadows. In terms of these reflectors, I actually have two of them. I have one that is 22.5 inches wide. I personally like to use this small one more as a reflector than as a diffuser, just because in my shooting space, which is my kitchen, my windows are quite big and that small circle doesn't really do much if I'm using that in my kitchen to try and diffuse the light because the light will just come all around into my scene. And the second reflector that I use is one that's much bigger than the small circle. This one is actually 47 inches long and 32 inches wide. This reflector I actually use most often as a diffuser to put in front of my big window in my kitchen in order to diffuse the light. In terms of the little helpers of the light modifiers, the first one is actually light stands. I remember when I started my food photography journey, I would always try to figure out how can I make my foam boards hold in place in my scene so that they're reflecting the lights onto my scene. So I would do all kinds of crazy gymnastics in order to hold these foam boards up. I would have cans, I would put them up against chairs, I would do crazy stuff. But with time, I just decided, you know, enough with trying to figure out how to make these things hold straight because you're spending more time figuring out how to hold these things up than actually taking photos. So I decided to invest in light stands. These light stands I bought off of Amazon and they're under $40 Canadian. And they're really useful because you can hang your reflectors, your diffuser off of them, and even other light attachments. Let's say if you were to do flash photography. Also, on top of these light stands, I actually have these little rotating clamps. Those clamps, you can just screw them up at the top of the light stands and they allow you to basically clip the foam boards, the diffuser, the reflectors on them. And then if, let's say, you would want to rotate the clamp um, to the side or straight down, then you can just do that directly on there. Another option instead of using the rotating clamps is just using basic clamps that you can buy at home hardware stores or even I'm sure at the dollar store. These clamps, how I used to use them before is just put them on the side of the light stand and hold my diffusers and reflectors and foam boards in that way. They're quite useful, they're cheaper than the rotating clamps, but also I've ran into little issues with them in the past 
where they wouldn't be as solid as the rotating clamps. So that's why I decided to upgrade. Well, if you've made it to the end of this video, you actually now know all of the tools that I use in my food photography from my camera, my tripod, my lat stands and much more. And if you found this video interesting, I would really love it if you would give it a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe and share. Also, let me know in the comments below if there's some equipment that you'd like me to go more into detail about or if you would want me to do a video about my flash photography equipment because I can do that as well. On that note, thank you so much for being here and for watching my video and for your kind comments. It always makes me so, so, so happy to learn that I'm helping you guys out with your food photography. And on that note, I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and I'll talk to you very, very soon.